I'm not going to spend more money than I'm actually making. And I'm getting loud and hype because I used to, I could spend money, y'all. I could spend money. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Zay. And today I wanted to go over some things that I wish I knew before I started my art business or really just starting business in general. If you didn't know, I own an art and design company called ArtXA, where I create illustrations that empower women of color through various products and designs. And I've owned that business since 2017. So I've been an entrepreneur, founder, CEO since 2017. So almost seven years, fresh out of high school, I was running my business, not having a clue in the world what I was doing. So I've been doing it mostly e-commerce, meaning like online, but I've done hundreds of events, whether it's paint parties, pop-up shops, networking events, live painting, showcases, so on and so forth. I did not have a background in business, so literally everything that I learned was through trial and error, buying business programs or courses, or you know, through mentors, or just watching through social media, like what I should do. So the first thing I wish I knew before I started my art business was the importance of storytelling. So this took me the longest to learn because when I first started my art business, I just wanted to put my art out there. I just wanted to inspire people. I did not want to have to share my story or per put any of my personal business out on the internet. After a certain point, I saw that that wasn't enough. Just posting my artwork on Facebook or Instagram wasn't enough. People gravitated more towards brands, products, or businesses that had a story to tell. You get what I'm saying? Like whether it was a personal connection, a story, or even something fake. Like there's a reason why commercials will have this whole story or family in this house just for some paper towels. You get what I'm saying? Like people are more inclined to buy something based on a story because we purchase with our emotions. Are we feeling lonely? Do we relate to this? Um, are we feeling happy? Are we in love? Are we desperate? Do we really need those shoes? Stuff like that. And that took me a while to learn. It took me about two years before I started to really do storytelling on my posts and when I was talking to people in person. Instead of just saying, I, I have an art business. Oh, I own a company called Art X Day where I create vibrant images of women of color that empower them. The next thing I wish I knew before I started my art business is that I need a business structure and strategy. When I started, I had no idea of what a business really entailed besides just making a social media account. Unfortunately, I am part of the generation that would start a business and be more obsessed with the name and the logo on Instagram opposed to what the business is actually doing and how it would be structured. I heavily rely on Instagram and Twitter engagement and those pages that used to repost my artwork and it would go viral. But after a certain point that hurt me because one, those pages aren't going to be around forever. Two, there's a market or audience of people that exist outside of social media that will still want to buy my artwork and products. And three, likes don't equal sales. At a certain point, you're just going to be working for Instagram and I'm going to get to that later. But probably 2019, I realized what customer profiles were, target audience, business strategy, all that type of stuff. And it made such a difference. And I wish I learned all that stuff before I started my business because it took out a lot of the guesswork. It made me become more specific in how I was selling and who I was selling to. For example, I am business for example, I am business to consumer, which basically just means that I am a business that sells my stuff directly to consumers, which is people that might buy off the internet. You know, another way somebody might do it is business to business, meaning like I am a business and I sell myself to, I sell my stuff to another business like Marshalls and then people buy stuff from them. You get what I'm saying? So it's important to have a business structure and strategy. Definitely made me more organized because before I was just, I was just doing everything under the sun to see what would stick and to see what would make me more money, which I highly do not recommend because you will burn out. But you know, if you're watching this and your artist just know, are you gonna sell prints and paintings or are you gonna do illustrations too? Are you gonna do products like bags, phone cases? All of that just comes within your strategy. Next thing I wish I knew before I started my business is that not all money is good money. And I'm pretty sure y'all heard that before, but it really, it really ingrained in me 
three years into my business. Not all money is good money. It's okay to say no. It's okay to say no. Not only for your sanity, but also for the reputation of your business. The more you say yes to projects you don't like doing just for the money, the more those people are going to keep coming back and that's all you're going to be doing at a certain point. Oh, somebody gonna come up to you and say, oh, Ron Ron said you made a logo for him. I'm trying to get a logo done too. You say yes. Now everybody, everybody's gonna be coming up to you saying, I want a logo, I want a logo. And you're, you're a portraiture artist. What are you doing logos for still? <laughs> and yes, having headache clients is typical in the beginning because you're just starting out and you got to get your feet wet. But after a certain point, they're just not worth it because all money is not good money because those headache clients most likely don't even see the value in your work or your products anyway. So they're going to want to negotiate or give you the runaround versus somebody who already knows your worth and already knows the value in your products. They're going to pay what it's worth. So don't take the money from the headache clients because they're only going to give you more headache and they're probably not even going to pay you what you're worth. The next thing I wish I knew before I started my art business is that you don't have to abandon the idea. You can just delay it. I wish I knew this because it would have saved me so much time, energy, money, and anxiety. As a creative, naturally, we just have a bunch of ideas. That's just who we are. But this makes us easily distracted. So even before social media, I always had a lot of ideas and projects that I wanted to do. But with the rise of social media and seeing everybody doing all these things, it just got heightened. I would try to do all these things within a year and it would be hurting my pockets or it would be making me think that I was missing out on something or somebody's gonna take my idea or it won't be as popular in the future. But it's okay to pause it and save it for another time. Something that I started doing was planning out my ideas and projects by seasons of the year, seasons or quarters. I might, I might not be able to do this right now because I already plan to do this this season, but I can do it in the fall or I can do it in the winter of next year. Check in with yourself and be honest on what you want the most so that you can prioritize that. And if you need to get off of Instagram, do that, just do that. Another thing I wish I knew before I started my art business, 17 year old me who just wanted to paint 24 seven is that you will resent your art sometimes. You will resent creating art. There will be times where you feel disconnected from your art because of your business. Tying money or just monetizing something that you love, it will become a headache. You will feel art blocks and you will feel this need of, oh, should I have quantity over quality? Should I push more art out just for the sake of pushing it out, more products or more Instagram? But I had to realize that we not like them. They not like us. We're not like them. Like we, I prioritize having quality art. So it's just not going to hit the same if I'm trying to push out a bunch of pieces of work and not really caring about the quality. So yeah. The next thing I wish I knew about before starting my business was scaling my business. For the longest time, I always knew my art business was going to be big and I would always tell people that, but I did not know how. I wish I knew of this concept before I started my business because it would have saved me a lot of headache, heartache, wasted time, anxiety, broke, pockets, just not having money, energy, everything. So essentially scaling your business is when you have an increased amount of revenue without an increase of resources. And basically all that means is you're making more money than you're spending. You're making more money than you're actually spending or you're making more money than you actually have to put energy into. And when I was when I was first learning about this, I just thought of like these big companies like walmart or like amazon or netflix do you think they're paying all this money to make millions of dollars no they don't have to because they have systems that are already like going and flow so that they keep making money they don't have this one ceo or just two people on their team doing all these things and spending all this money they don't have it because they have they have scaled but not everybody wants to scale but for me i wish i knew about it because i definitely do so if you plan to scale your business you have to get organized in your systems, how long it takes you to make a new art piece or how long it takes you to post when you're doing product design, things like that. You have to know your profit margins, which is basically if you spend $5 on a print, 
and you're charging it for 10, your profit margin is 50% because you're making 50% back. You have to know your profit margins, your finances. You got to get funding, whether that's through investors or grants, because obviously we don't want to spend our own money forever and build a team so that it doesn't just rely on you. You do not want to be 50 years old. I know I don't want to be 50 years old saying, yeah, I did all this. This is all me. Yeah, I run this by myself. I don't want to be an entrepreneur forever or somebody that's just running this all by myself. It's tiring. It's tiring. So until you can afford to hire people, I would just say, you know, have help with the people that's around you. Eventually get contractors. They're not employees, but they help you out from time to time. You pay them and then eventually you get employees, you know, with the people that you trust. The next thing, which I feel like is really important, the next thing that I wish I knew before starting my business is that you need to have a portfolio that you're actually proud of. Wish I knew that it is really important to have a portfolio that clearly shows what your style is, what you do, what you do best, and what your identity is as an artist. It's nice to draw a bunch of things to show your range and what you can do, but when you're a business, with specific products and designs, it's good to have a specific style and a portfolio people can easily recognize. The old ad right there, the way she do her highlight and her face or the way she do those abstract elements, oh yeah, that's art XA, I can tell. It sets you apart from your competition. And as artists, we don't really think of other artists as competition, but as a business, we just gotta say that because you know, there's other people and we have to like know what our competitive advantages and weaknesses are. The next thing I wish I knew before I started my art business was the importance of finances. For the longest time, I had an iffy relationship with finances. So a lot of times with my business, I would just ignore certain stuff and not try to document it because I didn't want to deal with it. But as I've healed that relationship and I know what's important, I document my stuff every month or I try to do it every month. Take your P&L sheet serious. A P&L sheet is just profit and loss. Like how much are you making? Like what expenses did you have to pay for? So that you know, you know everything. It's on paper. I wish I knew before how important it is to create budgets instead of just spending money on these pop-up shops or expenses, materials and stuff for my business just so that I can feel good or look good. You know, having a budget to know I'm not going to spend more money than I'm actually making. And I'm getting loud and hype because I used to, I could spend money, y'all. I could spend money. And I really had to learn that, listen, you only, you only made $200 from that painting. Why are you spending $300 on this stuff? Track your expenses. Track all revenue streams. And that just means if, if you have an ebook, track the money you make from that ebook. If you have prints track the money you have from that. If you're doing a brand deal, track how much you have from that. Track how much money you make from everything so that at the end of the month or the end of the year, when you're planning for next year, you can say, hmm, I didn't make that much money from my prints, but I made a lot of money from these phone cases. You get what I'm saying? So that you can just plan ahead and you know how to spend your money. Numbers don't lie. The numbers is gonna tell you what's up. Not, oh, I think people like this. I think I wanna do this. My heart's in this direction, but numbers don't lie. And that's really how it has helped me so much. And then I think I said this earlier, but apply for funding. I just started doing this two years ago and I've only won one grant so far, but that's not gonna stop me. But it's really nice to not have to bootstrap and use my own funds for everything. You have big plans for your art business, really look into like doing grants because I rather use other people's money than my own and especially if you're looking into investors showing people that you can make this money back and they're investing in your business nobody wants to use their own money forever nobody nobody the last thing i wish i knew before i started my art business is the importance of having faith discipline and trust Maybe it's because of my faith. Maybe it's because I'm a spiritual girly, but this is the most important to me. And I think it applies to everybody. You will get nowhere without a good mindset. And that's just, that's just what I believe. For the longest within the first couple years of my business, I always believed my art business was going to make it because I loved it. But sometimes I faced a lot of self doubt and like had a lack of confidence in my business. But really what that came from was comparing myself to others, getting distracted, 
not being smart about my money, not sticking to a plan and not having faith. Now with specific plans and baby steps for all of the goals that I set myself, it's become much more easier. And I, I identify as neurodivergent. So literally, unless I have a schedule, routine or plan, it's not gonna work for me. That's just who I am. I feel like I've grown and I know myself now. If I don't have a schedule or routine every day, and I can stray from it, of course, but if I don't have it, a lot of anxiety starts to develop in my brain. So having a schedule that you create for yourself that's based off of a plan that you have with all these goals and sticking to it with trust and faith will help you so much. Because if I have a plan, that's just like if um, somebody invites me to go out to eat as soon as I get off of work, but I already knew that I have to finish a painting today. I already have this plan. So it's easy to not get distracted. You get what I'm saying? It's easy to say no because I have a plan in mind. Now, if I, as soon as I get off work, I don't know what I'm doing and somebody asks me to go out to eat, I'm say yeah, because I want to go out to eat. I don't want to have to cook. So when you have a plan already in mind, a routine, it's so much easier to stick to it. That's just the first thing. The next thing is having trust and faith in it. Trusting yourself, like get rid of all the distractions is so important. And it took me the longest to learn this. And it took me the longest because I didn't believe that these plans that I made for myself was going to work. And I didn't believe it because as artists, one, we're creating a routine or we're creating a blueprint from scratch. It's not a lot of people out here doing what we do, which is like making a business from our personal artworks. You get what I'm saying? It's a, it's a few people doing it now that make it big and stuff, but it's very, it's very unique. And it's very hard to get sidetracked, but I wish I knew how important that was in the beginning. That trust and trust in the plan will take you so much far because listen, the anxiety was anxiety for me. Of course, things will happen out of our control, but I feel like as business owners, it's important to give ourselves grace and it's also important to keep a strong mindset. So that is all for today art business owners and business owners in general just remember to trust the process and give yourself grace be patient with yourself remember to take breaks to avoid burnout and i really really hope that this video helped i have a lot more things that i wish i knew before starting my business so let me know if you guys would like a part two and let me know what is if y'all have businesses what are some things that you wish you knew before you started your business like what would have saved you a lot of time or a lot of money energy or anything be sure to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye